do you ever wonder when you look at your child's report card, how did the teacher even come up with these grades? Or what do these grades even mean? And especially if your child has more than one teacher, right? Well, when we talk about grades and report cards, sometimes that can feel like we're opening a can of worms. And we kind of are. <laughs> so in our show today, we're going to open that can of worms. We're going to talk about grades and report cards. We're going to talk about how things can be individualized. What a concept, right? For your child. So if you don't know me, I'm Charmaine Tanner. I am a parent. My son Dylan has Down syndrome. He is an adult now, but I remember those days when he was in school and how we had to advocate for him to be included. Um, I also a retired teacher. I was a special ed teacher and a classroom teacher, and I found my own advocacy business, so I've been doing that now. And all of this is because I just feel like, you know, I'm on this mission to help other parents make sure their kids are seen for their strengths, seen and presumed to be competent learners, to know that there are ways that they can be successfully included, no matter what the gap is. So as an advocate, I spend a lot of times with family, a lot of time with families, um, helping them develop some advocacy strategies. When I come on my weekly show here, it's another way that we can connect and we can talk about things that are going on and happening. So if you are watching this live, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. If you're on the replay, also you can post questions and comments because I will be back to answer those. So the other thing is sometime today you have to remind me <laughs> to um, talk about the giveaways that we're going to have. So we'll do that in a few minutes. But if I space it out, you can just type in the comments, Charmaine, talk about giveaways, and I'll come back and do that. Um, the other thing that we always do is I write show notes with key takeaways, quotes, you know, other resources about the topic. So if you'd love to get your hands on the show notes from today, just type the word or the two words, <laughs> show notes in the comments. And hopefully my IEP bot will get back with you. And Tuesday morning, they'll be emailed out to you. So. We are going to jump into this subject of grades. Now, I think it would be interesting to see um, from the people that we have here on live, and Andrea is here from Arizona. So, hey, um, I was going to see if I can show her comments, but they kind of go away fast. <laughs> um if you can tell me what you what information you would like when you see your child's report cards, what do you think is the most important thing for those grades to mean for you in order for it to really be information that can be helpful? So if you type in the comments, um, what do you want to see on your child's report card? Is it a letter grade? Are they comments? Is it you want to see more of a portfolio of your child's work? Um, type in the comments because that's really important for us to figure out what we really want grades to mean. And as I said, we're going to be talking about at least, you know, there's like at least 13 different reasons or purposes of grades. So we want to make sure that um, your IEP team, your child and, your, and you as an IEP team member are all on the same page. So let's go over here. We're going to start and look at some information. Most of this has been... Um, taken from some research that was done a while ago by um, David Monk, who is, and I don't know why my 
I'm not seeing my PowerPoint pull up here. Um, David Monk from the University of Illinois. So like I said, it, it can be like we're opening a can of worms. And let me make sure that I'm sharing this. And the reason why it can be a can of worms is because you've got lots of different factors. You've got the district grading policies and all of these could actually be um, their own separate workshop, but we're just gonna quickly talk about some of these. So the district grading policies and the thing that you have to think about when you know a teacher is saying, well, it's our policy not to, um, you know, change the grades. If your child's in the general ed class, then they have to receive and be graded on the same criteria as other students, because that's our policy. Whenever you hear somebody say that's our policy, then what you need to do is say, I would love to read that so I understand that better. And if it's truly a district grading policy, then it's been um, adapted or adopted by the school board. Um, and you should be able to go back and see that information. And if it seems like it's gonna be in conflict with what you're asking for at the IEP team meeting, um, you might want to talk to your principal or an administrator about that ahead of time. But that is one of the worms, is the district grading policy. The other thing is accept acceptance of grading adaptations by the staff. So like so many things we as parents advocate for, for our children, it isn't something that the staff is currently doing. And so we're asking them to change their behavior, which we know can not necessarily be that easy, right? So you're gonna to have to be aware there are, I will give you links in the show notes about some other research-based articles about grading adaptations. Sometimes that helps to share with staff to show that it's not just something that you're making up, but that is actually founded in um, research that's been done. The other worm that can come up is what can be noted on a student's transcript. So this is especially, you see this during um, middle school and high school years where there are different state rules and regs about what kinds of things can be marked on a transcript. Like, can it be an asterisk with this is a modified grade? In a lot of states, you can't do things like that. So that becomes like this other whole, you know, kind of rabbit hole that you can go down. Um, you also, I think the best practice is to make sure that the grading adaptations are aligned with the IEP. Um, and so you want to go back and look at accommodations. If there's modifications, you want to look, does it say anything in those sections about grading adaptations? And if not, that's a cue <laughs> that you can have that discussion with your staff at school and see what kinds of, um, help that they might be able to get. The other big thing that can happen when we talk about grades and report cards is um, the whole thing of diplomas. And again, the states have that prerogative to establish whatever requirements they need for a student to re receive a typical diploma. Some states say each school district can decide their own criteria. So that is really um, individualized to where you live, but you do want to check on that because for some states, if your child is receiving modifications, um, then that puts them on a track for not the typical diploma. So all of those things, like I said, could be their own workshop, but um, we're going to just carry on and look at some other things today that have to do with making grade adaptations. So like I said, it can mean, grades mean different things to different people. The teacher might be thinking, ah, her grades compare her to other students in the class. And the kid might be thinking, just tell me, did I pass or fail this class? The parent might be thinking, you know, her grades should show how hard she's worked. Well, there's lots of 
other interpretations of what grades should mean to you. So I would love for you to type in the comments what you think grades mean to you when you look at your child's report card. Um, whether or not they have a disability, it's still an important topic that, that um, you and the school team talk about. So when we look at some of the research, and I said like this is from David um, Monk and um, Bursuk from 2003, that there's at least 13 different purposes of grades. So one, it could be your grade shows improvement in your classes. Two, it could help the student plan for their future especially for um, students that are going to be applying to colleges or universities, grades can be helpful in that way because a lot of colleges and universities still look at your high school GPA. Um, other people say, no, you know, the purpose of the grades is just to see how hard the student is trying. Or, Again, for plans after high school, um, you need to know you need so many credits to go to college. You need a certain grade in that class in order to get the credit. So for some students, it might mean like, is this going to help or break my chances of going to college after school, after high school? Um, for some parents, they see a grade, especially if it's a lower grade, and they think, ah, this is telling me what my child needs to improve on. Other people think, well, you know, I wonder how much of the cooperative learning that goes on in the classroom, how much of that is counted in the grade? And as a parent, you might feel like the ability to work with a group of students is really important and you want them to you know, work on that as a skill. You want them to have that as a criteria when the teacher is figuring out their grades. But let's look, there's more. <laughs> Sometimes people say the purpose of grades is to find out what the student is good and not so good at. Um, tell colleges and employers what the student is good at. So for students that are applying for jobs out of high school, um, a lot of employers will want to get their high school transcripts and will make judgments on what they see as far as grades on those transcripts. Um, some people feel like, no, the grade should say what my child can do independently. Um, and that's what I want the teacher to grade my child on. I think probably number 10 is what school districts and most teachers feel that grades tell us how the, your child performs compared to others. Um, and I think we know because our kids are on IEPs that um, that comparison isn't very meaningful for us as parents. Um, so that might not be how you want your child graded. And if that's the teacher's mindset, then that's a topic of discussion because chances are there's going to have to be some kind of adaptations to the grade system. Um, other people say, you know, I think the grades just show my child's improvement over last quarter. You know, he can do so much more. Or some people believe that when you're in middle school and the grades that you give, get are going to make an impact on what classes you can take in high school. And that can be true. I mean, you can look at what type of math class and the grade you got it got on it in eighth grade and whether or not you can take a freshman level math class or a higher level math class, depending on what you did in middle school. So all of these things are like really critical factors. Some people think grades will try to help students work harder, to motivate them. And I grew up in the in the days where I think I was promised a dollar for every A I got on my report card. 
um, and a dollar today doesn't sound like much. And I'm not sure that was really a motivation, but it was nice when report cards went home. And um, if I had lots of A's, then I got some cash. <laughs> um, but that's really, you know, that's that external motivation. And what we really want from our kids is um, that internal drive to do better, to learn more, to be excited about learning versus this external motivation, right? Um, and then you look at my note, because I thought it was interesting. And I know this research article that I'm talking about right here is from 2003. But I was really surprised that they didn't talk about how grades can measure progress in IEP goals. And then to me, the other big thing is that grades can measure effectiveness or lack of that effectiveness with instructional strategies. Um, so I'm always coming from the point of view that if a child isn't doing well at school, it's up to me as the adult, as a teacher, to try to figure out what I can do differently so the child will learn. Um, and that's a completely different mindset of your child is failing. And for these reasons, your child can't be included in the general ed classroom, which is a comment that we hear a lot. So Andrea, let me see your comment here. She says, yes, how to reconcile the teacher's need for grades to be standardized in the class and the need to individualize. Yeah, and that's where um, the whole can of worms comes in, right? <laughs> uh, and it does take this ongoing, you know, conversation, this kind of give and take between what the teacher, sometimes the parameters that the teacher is under because of what the principal's expectations are or what the district, district expectations are. Um, However, if your child is on an IEP, I think we always default, default to that I, I word, I letter, <laughs> individualized. And we need to look at not only classroom accommodations or classroom modifications, but grading adaptations. Um, and a lot of times that will need to start on a bigger system level. Um, and I hate to like say task force or committee because it's like, ah, do they ever get anything done? But some districts have been real successful when they've had a district wide group of people that represent, you know, both staff and parents and students. I think you always want to have student voices on your committees. Um, and they start the conversation at a district-wide level. Um, depending on your school or district and how large it is, you know, sometimes you can just start at your building level and have a conversation with the principal and the teachers, um, and you can get some change going that way. But next week, when we talk about advocacy strategies, we'll go into that a little bit more. But yeah, that's a great... Um, that's a great worm to bring up <laughs> to discuss. So if you look at those 13 different, you know, plus, right, I added a couple more of, um, you know, the different purposes that grades can have, you can see why it can get really confusing. Um, the other thing in this research was some survey results, because what they did is they sent out a survey to um, parents both with and without disabilities, and they had them rank order those 13 purposes of grades. And what they found out is that parents of children without disabilities felt it was more important on showing achievement to colleges and employers. So that's what parents were most interested in um, if they had children without disabilities versus parents of kids with disabilities, they felt like grades should show their child's strengths, their needs, feedback on how to improve, 
and also be sensitive to that individual pro progress. And like I said, um, different schools will have different criteria. I know when Dylan was in high school, one of his goals was to get a letter jacket um, like his older brother and sister had. And I was like, not real sure. <laughs> um, at that time, Dylan wasn't playing in the sport. It's like, I don't know, how would they figure out his grades and figure that out for getting an academic letter? Well, for Dylan's high school, the teachers did have an agreement that his grades and other students on IEPs were based on the progress that they were making on their IEP goals. Um, and so Dylan, when he was a sophomore in high school, was able to get a letter jacket because of academic honors, um, which of course made his, <laughs> made his whole year. Um, but that kind of possibility and opportunity, I think should be available for all students. And so even if your child is in elementary school now, you might start talking to some middle school and high school parents and see what that process currently is in your district and maybe what changes you can have um, help come about, right? <laughs> because we know change takes time. So that's the other thing. It's like, uh, how much time do we have to wait for this? So the other thing that the survey said was that all parents thought grades should show effort and work habits. And so in some report cards, you'll see a separate section that will, you know, grade kids on those work habits. But let's look now at a process that um, was developed as far as what do you do when you want to start looking at grade habit adaptations and how can this come about? So. I see we have some new people on, so I just want to remind you guys um, that if you want the show notes where I type up the key takeaways, some quotes you can use, and I give you additional resources about this topic, just type the word show notes in the comments and my IEP bot, hopefully, <laughs> will get back with you. Um, and so... The other thing I was gonna tell people too, and maybe we'll do this before we get into this process, is we have some giveaways. Since it's a new year, it's like, I'm excited, we should do new things. So at the um, in the afternoon today, I'm gonna to come back on my Facebook page here and I'll type in a question. If you respond to the question, you'll be entered in the giveaway. If you respond, you're one of the first five people, you get five extra chances. And what we have going on are three giveaways. So you get, you might get, a, hello, my name is That Parent Mug. You might get a copy of my book, The Art of Advocacy, or you might get a third gift, which I don't have, like it's coming tomorrow, but it's kind of like this size and maybe this thick. And I'll show you tomorrow what that is. But Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there'll be questions on my page for you to answer. And then on Sunday, I'll choose a random number and that person will win. I'll choose another number, so we'll have three winners, okay? So now I've talked about the giveaways, so that's good. <laughs> so let's get back to, we're thinking that great adaptations might be a good idea. And it's like, what kind of a process do you use to go through to figure that out? So this is one process that Monk and Bursak had developed and you might be interested in. So it's a five-step process where we talk about the expectations, the purpose, the benefits of adaptations, we have a written plan and then we monitor and make sure that everything is going well. So let's jump into the first one, which is expectations. So first, your team needs to sit down and you really need to identify the expectations for academic and other skills for success in the general ed classroom. Now, 
I don't want this to turn into, you know, this is what all kids have to do. And if you can't do this, then you don't belong. So I also want there to be an expectation that we're going to talk about the student's strengths and their interests. And we're going to identify how some of these regular ed, general ed class expectations can be changed and how those kinds of barriers can be reduced. Um, because like I said, I one of the fears that I have is as soon as we as soon as we start talking about grade adaptations, there's going to be a teacher most likely that's going to say, you know, these are the standards. These are the standards our state says we have to meet. Your child is down here. There's such a huge gap. You know, it doesn't matter about grade adaptations. That child really isn't going to get anything out of being in general ed. And then the kind of the meeting dissolves into a whole nother topic of, right, least restrictive emplacement, inclusion, all that. So we want to be careful when we talk about expectations for academic skills because we want to look at this is why we have universal design for learning so all the students will be learning in the classroom. Um, but you do want to see where some of those differences are because that's where your adaptations are going to come into play. So let me know if this makes sense. Um, <laughs> and if you have any questions as I go on, 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 right? Um, so let's go back here to expectations. So yeah, I think it's having that mindset that there's a lot of environmental barriers, instructional strategy barriers, and we need to be cognizant of those too. So the second step in the process is for the team to discuss and clarify the purpose of grades. And remember, there's this whole laundry list of what could possibly be the purpose of grades. And that's where we want to reconcile that and have that discussion. And then step three is to brainstorm the potential benefits of, you know, a certain grade, grading adaptation. Um, and next week, when we go into some examples of grading adaptations, we'll be talking about both kind of the pros and the cons of different types of adaptations. So make sure you come back next week for part two. And then as every good advocate knows, we need to have a written plan because we just can't walk out of the room with like, oh, well, this was great and okay, and assume that it's gonna be put into place. So you really need to have a written plan. I suggest that it become part of the IEP. You can put it in the accommodations or modifications section, um, but you want to describe what the adaptations are going to be and the roles for each of the team members um, because we don't want you know, the general ed teacher thinking, oh, the special ed teacher is going to give me the grade for the class. We don't want the special ed teacher thinking, oh, I guess it's the general ed teacher that's going to come up with the grade. Um, you know, I think best practice is when your child is included is that the special ed teacher and the classroom teacher would come together and have a discussion about the IEP goals, if it's going to be a grade based on progress, um, look at participation in the class, you know, different factors, whatever those are that your, your team has decided, and have the special ed teacher and the classroom teacher um, have that talk and um, make sure that it's a consensus how they're going to do things, right? Because that's super important. And then next, you always want to decide on a procedure to monitor the student's progress um, and monitor the, the effectiveness of the grade adaptations. Um, 
And when I look at this information about grades and report cards, it just really, a lot of it can apply to progress reports also, um, because you want the grade to be meaningful on the report card and you want any progress letters or numbers um, on a progress report to be meaningful too. So I think a lot of the information that we're talking about today and next week when I give you some specific examples will really be helpful, not only for grades on report cards, but how we look at um, progress reports and what kind of meaningful information we want to get from progress reports too. So there's always you know, it seems like you learn one thing in one context, but there's always an application in another place too. So we've got some new people on live with us. So I want to welcome you. Um, Andrea has a question. So she said, have you seen a form to use for the written plan? Thanks. You know, I don't think I have, and I'll look for next week. Um, you know, a specific form, but I'll, I'll look because I do have some other resources and one, I could put those in the show notes for this week. So if you're on new to, you know, right now came on live type show notes in the comments and I'll get that to you. And I will look for a specific form. What I've seen before is, like I said, in the accommodation or the modification section, I've seen um, a description of a grade adaptation like process that they're gonna use, but usually that written description comes after they've had that discussion, right? Of like, what's the purpose of grades? How are we gonna do this? Is it gonna be the same in science as it in math class? I mean, that um, can of worms, right? There's like, as you start down this road, there's like more worms that keep coming out of the can. Um, but thanks for asking that. And I'll make sure that I look for that so I can put that in your show notes. So we have this whole process. And like I said, next week, what we're going to be doing is looking at examples of grading adaptations. We're going to look at the pros and cons and also some specific advocacy um, steps that you can take so that grades are really meaningful. They're not just something that's kind of, you know, jotted down on a report card, but they do really have a lot of meaning. So before we wind up, I want to remind you, we have giveaways. You can get, oops, it's probably, I don't know. Can I show this? Hello, my name is that parent mugs. I just started getting these. Um, a copy, another person will get a copy of my Art of Advocacy book, and the third person will get a mystery gift. <laughs> um, so this afternoon, I'll be posting a question and Visions and Voices Together Facebook page. Answer the question. There's no right or wrong answer. If you're one of the first five people to answer, you'll get five extra entries into our giveaways. Friday and Saturday, I'll ask another question you can respond to. You get more chances to win. And on Sunday, we'll have probably Siri pick a random number and we'll have three winners to celebrate the new year. So thanks for being here with us live. Thank you for watching the replay. If you think of other comments and questions, please post them and I will circle back and respond to those. Um, next week, January 10th is our part two about meaningful grades on report cards. I hope you can join us live for that show. Until next week, take care and we shall see you later. Bye-bye.